Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of EIH Limited and SKP Securities, it is my pleasure to welcome you to EIH Limited's Q4 FI23 and FI23 earnings webinar. We have with us Mr. Vikram Oberoi, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Kalal Kundu, Chief Financial Officer. Kindly note, this meeting is being recorded for compliance reasons, and during the course of this discussion, there may be certain forward-looking statements, which may which must be viewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. We'll have the opening remarks and a presentation by the management, followed by a Q&A session. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Oberon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naveen. Uh, and good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I believe there are about 60 people on the call right now, and thank you for joining us. Uh, you would have seen uh, our, our results both for Q4 and for the financial year. And uh, thankfully, we've had a, uh, a very good year, a record year for uh, the company, both at a standalone and at a consolidated level. And this, these results wouldn't have been possible had it not been for the dedication of all our colleagues who work hard to look after our guests to gain their trust and loyalty. So I must thank them. Of course, I would like to also thank our guests and uh, people who've invested in the company for their faith in us. Kalol has a presentation, so I'll ask Kalol to present that, and then we'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vikram. Uh, good, evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So we begin uh, the presentation with... With the key highlights of the Indian hospitality industry, with this is as for the HVS Anarok report for February, March, and April 2023 edition, which basically puts out the key highlights of quarter four, where uh, as for the report, the Indian hotel industry recorded its best ever performance since the pandemic began, with occupancies ranging from 70 to 72% overall and average rates exceeding rupees 8,200. Domestic air traffic in India has increased by close to 7% in March compared to the previous month, and it increased by 11% compared to pre-COVID levels, so indeed encouraging statistics. Mumbai, as per the report, was the market leader in March 2023 with occupancy rates exceeding 76% and the average daily rate of 11,000 rupees. Uh, EIH uh, performance for quarter four is the best ever in the history of the company. It's a stellar operating performance where EIH has broken its own record several times over. There, uh, which is really shown in this uh, slide, the blue line representing EIH owned hotels and the golden line representing EIH owned and managed hotels in India, where what is clearly visible is the fact that starting from the quarter one of financial year 2020, where RevPAR was around 6,500 levels, has now touched 15,000, which is pretty uh, pretty record-breaking. I'm happy to share that uh, EIH has demonstrated market-leading operational performance. This is measured uh, by STR reports, and the source, as is mentioned in the footnote, is the STR composite, which uh, EIH uses for its own and managed hotels. This data comp set, uh, this data set is uh, for all domestic hotels which are, which are owned and managed by EIH. And as is visible that uh, since uh, over a four year period starting April 19 to March 23, the RGI has been consistently above 100, which is supported ably by the ARR index, which is also consistently over 100, which shows uh, that or demonstrates uh, that the hotel or the company has been able to command a premium in the industry. And this is uh, primarily due to the company's unwavering commitment to quality and meticulous attention to detail that discerning, uh, discerning guests uh, yearn for. The premium positioning is also reflected in the awards and accolades that, that the company uh, has received and the various hotels have received. Uh, the Oprah Hotels and Resorts, of course, ranked the world's best hotel brand by Travel and Leisure USA in the world's best awards in 2022. Uh, it's been ranked the world's best hotel brand for service excellence by Travel and Leisure in India and South Asia also in 2020, 2022. 
Uh, it was voted, as you all remember, the best hotel group for three consecutive years by Telegraph Travel Awards UK 2019, 18, and 17. Of course, the next three years, because of, because of the pandemic, the Telegraph Travel Awards uh, uh, were not held. Trident Hotels, incidentally, was also ranked amongst the best five uh, star uh, hotel groups in India by Travel and Leisure in 2022. And our individual properties, I have, uh, these are all listed out here. I'm not reading them out one by one. The Ubrai New Delhi, the Ubrai Mumbai, the Ubrai Gurgaon, the Ubrai Amar Vilas, the Ubrai Vanne Vilas, the Ubrai Uday Vilas, the Ubrai Sukh Vilas, the Ubrai Beach Resort Alzora, the Ubrai Marrakesh, and the Ubrai Beach Resort Mauritius. All of them uh, have uh, have received a l- plenty of awards and accolades as are listed here. And we are incredibly proud of these achievements and the recognition they bring to EIH Limited and our, to our esteemed hotels. These awards reflect our ongoing commitment to delivering exceptional hospitality experiences that create lasting memories for our guests. As mentioned earlier, the financial achievements have also been unprecedented. We will cover them in two aspects here in this presentation. The first one is with respect to quarter four for standalone as well as consolidated. Standalone uh, in revenues have increased vis-a-vis the same quarter previous year from 279 crores to 586 crores, which is a 110% increase. The EBITDA has grown by 621% over the same period, over the same quarter, from 34.6 crores to 249.3 crores. This, a similar uh, set of results are, are evident for the consolidated results as well, where revenues have grown from 316.9 crores to 663.8 crores, and EBITDA has grown from 34.9 crores to 231 crores. There is substantial financial agility that is evident uh, because of enhanced operational efficiencies, as, as, you, could, as you would probably notice that the growth in EBITDA is actually, the growth percent in EBITDA is actually higher than the growth percent in, in revenue, which means that there is, there is enough and more operational efficiencies that have really kicked in. And this is again evident here where in quarter four of 2023, while revenue increased by 25% over the same period, the total expenses increased by only 3%. Monthly occupancy trends in the quarter four, uh, occupancy ARR and RevPAR trends, um, which slightly softened in March, uh, but seem to be doing better uh, in the months after that again. City-wise, quarter on quarter, financial year 23 versus financial year 20 is, is as shown here, uh, with Bangalore recording the highest RevPAR growth, followed by Shimla Chandigarh, Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Delhi, amongst others. The quarter four occupancy and AR performance at domestic hotels, including all managed hotels. Uh, this is available in the presentation, and there's, it's, it's a slightly busy slide, so I won't uh, take you through the individual data points. But essentially what we're saying is that uh, whether it's AR or, uh, or FPAR or occupancy, all of them have seen uh, increases, substantial increases uh, across uh, the quarters that are compared here with. Food and beverage revenue also increased um, in domestic hotels, including managed hotels from 143 crores to 222 crores, which is a 55% increase. And uh, one of the heartening uh, facts is also the strong bounce back in the OFS OS revenues, which have grown in quarter and quarter by 100% and is going strong. For the full year, it's a similar story here. Uh, again, revenues going up from 1627 crores, the golden bars in FY19 quarter four, sorry, in FY19 full year to FY23 at 1836 crores. EBITDA going up from 406 crores in FY90 to 626 crores in uh, FY24. And the profit after tax going up from 113 crores to 320 crores in the standalone. And in case of consolidated from 149 crores to 329 crores. This is a depiction of the return on capital employed. So essentially, uh, this is on a consolidated basis. The total capital employed on a consolidated basis minus 
the cash and cash equivalents and all current and non-current investments total up to 2,867 crore on on an overall basis. The return on capital employed of this amount is 19%. And obviously the cash that is there uh, and the investments that are there are being separately monitored. The cash will obviously be deployed going forward for, for growth of the company uh, and will also be used to garner additional debt uh, for projects going forward. Uh, if you were to look at the, the majority of this uh, net capital employed, about 62% of this is deployed in, 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 in hotel assets and in our investment property in Gurgaon which where the ROC ranges between 16% to 35%. And if one were to break that further up, uh, one would see that the domestic hotel assets alone, uh, they contribute. I mean, again, if you look at Obra hotels, about 32.5% of the 1694 crores is deployed in Obra hotels. And this is at, at uh, historic cost, uh, of course, uh, where the return capital employed is 45%. In case of Trident hotels, it's 22 percent, which just shows that the the the, uh, the fact that the Obra hotels are premium also generates uh, a very high capital employed uh, return on capital employed for the company. The company has demonstrated uh, good financial resilience, strength, and debt management. As a result of which, uh, the year that we started with, we were at a net debt of 271 crores which is now at a positive cash balance of 129 crores. This is on a net basis. Quarter on quarter and year on year trends. This is just to give a perspective. Direct segment is has really over the years been going strong quarter on quarter and is really one of the best performing segments as of now. But corporate also has really picked up and reached pre-COVID levels. You could see the line in, uh, which I've drawn to just demonstrate that the, the highest in all these quarters from FY20 to FY23 was in quarter three of FY20. And currently, as we speak in the quarter four, FY23, uh, the corporate business, corporate room re- revenues from corporate business has also gone up. Uh, Mines has also crossed uh, well over the pre-COVID uh, levels, etc. Uh, leisure is, uh, uh, is just beginning to pick up, and uh, especially with foreign leisure, uh, just beginning to come up. We have a, we have a separate slide on that as well. So the trend of foreign room nights basically shows, uh, that till February 2023, uh, for Obroy, for Trident and all hotels taken together, the foreign room nights were well below uh, pre-COVID levels, which indeed is very encouraging because, uh, which just shows, uh, the optimism that one might really, uh, take away from this. Because the foreign room nights, when they come back, they'll obviously contribute way more um, uh, to, the, to the overall kitty of the company. We continue our efforts on carbon footprint. This is, again, some data points, which you can go through in the presentation. And the performance highlights, I'm not, again, going through these because these have already been published, and I'm sure you have access to, to all of this. So with that, uh, I'll, just, I'll just quickly... Uh, reiterate the upcoming projects which have been announced. So we have two uh, sort of projects. One, Bay Club in Mumbai, which has already opened in, in November 22. It's a world-class members-only uh, club. And the first one that EIHS is, is uh, managing. Uh, we are also shortly due to launch a new standalone uh, restaurant in Mumbai. And in FI 24-25, there are three committed projects which have been mentioned here. In FI 25-26, there are three again. And in FI 26-27, there are three more. And there are under about 11 hotels which are under active discussion. And we shall shortly be announcing them as soon as they are concluded. The business footprint is again available for, for anybody who's interested in the presentation. And this is just the statistics about the number of keys, et cetera. Thank you so much. And we will be happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you, Kanon. Friends, anyone with a question, uh, please raise your hands. We'll unmute you and take your question. We'll wait for a couple of moments just to let some questions line up. In the meanwhile, I've shared the investor presentation that uh, Kalal just presented. So in case uh, you want to go through it and you have some specific questions, please feel free. We have a question from Amit Agarwal. 
Amit, please go ahead. Amit, you're not audible. Yes, some connectivity issue. We'll go to the next question. Amit, if you can just try again. We have a question from Hari S. Hari, please go ahead. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay, now one second. Uh, Amit, you'll have to just wait for a moment, please. Can, can you hear me, sir? Yes, Hari, please go ahead. Okay, okay, sir. The few years ago, like uh, decades ago, we are among the top two players in the industry. But now others have gone up in capacity, though not in our scale or luxury. But is the management concerned about this, sir? And the second question is, uh, this 30% revenue with 126 crores, what will happen to it after the new lease deed and buying of the Himachal government holding, uh, what will happen to this amount? And the third one also, what are the plans on Andaman and Nicobar Islands? That's all, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Hari. I'll try and answer those questions. And, and Kalo, please feel free to chip in. Um, so the first one was on uh, our... On, on our company vis-a-vis -vis other other hotel companies. And uh, Hari, we, as you know, are in the luxury segment. Now, you'll also know that this segment, uh, with various uh, statistics that you look at in, in India, is growing much faster than others. Um, and therefore, we believe that there's tremendous opportunity in this segment. This is the segment we want to focus on. This is the segment we want to grow. And if you saw the ROC details that Kalol shared, even amongst Oberoi and Trident, uh, Oberoi, the premium segment, uh, achieves a considerably higher ROC. That's also reflected in the average room rates and also on RevPAR. So we believe in this segment. We believe in uh, the future growth of India. Uh, and we believe that the segment will continue to grow like it has uh, uh, in the past, uh, maybe even at a quicker pace and a great accelerated place, which will benefit uh, certainly Oberoi hotels and also Trident hotels in the in the luxury and uh, up, uh, upper upscale segments. So that was the, the first question. The second question was on Wildflower Hall um, and uh, or Mash, uh, uh, Mashobra. And actually, we have provided in the accounts, uh, in the consolidated accounts, which both include EIH standalone uh, and uh, Mashobra, um, 69 crore towards the lease payments, interest, and there were some penalties. Kalol, do you just want to run through those figures uh, to give greater insight on that? Sure. I'll just uh, maybe, since we've already mentioned the amount, what I'll basically say is that this entailed uh, some payable from 2005 to 2000 uh, to the date when we accepted the award. Uh, of the arbitrator. And therefore, we've now provided for the lease rentals as well as uh, applicable, but I would not get too much into the details because uh, the execution petition has been filed and it is subjudice. So therefore, I'll not really get into it. But just to give you a flavor of uh, what happens to the company, I think that was your question. The company has over 200 crores of cash. So obviously, if this were to go through, and this is again subjudice, so please we'll take it with, with the yes, due... Sir. Sorry. No, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And, so, and uh, Kalol, maybe, maybe I, I also made a probably I said should have said more than I should have given that these. I think we should really limit uh, what what we say. But but please feel free if you share that view, then you can. If you don't, then please please go ahead. Yes. So I, I would. That's that's why I was coming to it from. And I think Hari. Uh, uh, overall, I can say that it is positive for the company uh, because we've taken a decision and obviously after charging lease rentals, etc., the rest of the profit belongs would belong to the company. But beyond this, I would refrain from commenting at the moment because it is subjudice. And the last question, Hari, you had was on Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Um, now, we would be uh, very interested in uh, a hotel opportunity in, in either one of those. Of course, Andamans I know, uh, I, Andamans I know well. Um, 
and uh, they're beautiful islands, some beautiful beaches. Uh, and I'm not just referring to Havelock, but to others as well. Uh, and as and when these opportunities come up, provided they are on terms that make commercial sense, we would be very interested to pursue these opportunities either on our own or with partnerships. So we would be, uh, <clears throat> that's really all I can say at this point on, 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 uh, on, on the Andama and Nicobar Islands. And, and thank you, Hari, so much. Thank you, Edmund. Thank, thank you, Hari. Yeah. Uh, Amit, please unmute yourself. Amit Agarwal. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, Amit, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, hello Amit. This is, hello, how are you? I'm well. How are you, Amit? Nice, good, to, thank nice you. to hear from you. Uh, uh, There's a mention of 30 making a land in Burgaon. Can you please let us know the plans for the same? This is my Sorry. first question. Sorry, Amit, I couldn't, couldn't, your voice is coming, uh, slightly, uh, um, ruffled. Uh, could you repeat the question? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Yeah, there's a mention of 30 meter, uh, 30 meter land in Burgaon. Can you please let us know the plans for the same? So, is, is this? There is a mention of 30 acre plot in Burgaon. Sorry? One three, 13 acre. One three, 13 acre yeah, okay. plot 13 in Burgaon. So what yes. is our plan for the same? So, um, this actually is, there's a, a piece of land, uh, in Gurgaon on Sona, uh, in Sona rather, um, which is, belongs to the, to the company. And, uh, as we were actually thinking of, uh, uh, selling this land, uh, we're not now. Um, uh, and we will certainly, when we have a plan for development of that, 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 that site, we will share those details with you. Nothing right now. Nothing right now. Nothing that I can share with you right now. And my second question is, uh, the Kerala boats are not in use, it seems. Any particular reason for shutting down the operation over there? Uh, I, I'm sorry, you were talking... The question about... is MB Vinda, I guess. Right. Okay, yeah. so well, I couldn't hear the question. I'm, I'm so sorry. I think they're not in use nowadays. Uh, uh, any reason yeah, for uh, shutting down the operations over there? Uh, yes, the, the boat is not sailing, uh, at present, Amit. And, and one of the things that we, uh, are really actively pursuing, uh, which was apparent from the slide also that Kalo shared is really focusing on, uh, investing our efforts in assets that give a return. Uh, sadly, Vrinda didn't fall into one of those. And, uh, the boat isn't sailing. Uh, we're looking at what can be done with Vrinda. Um, it has been provided, it's been written off completely on our, on our balance sheet, uh, over the years. So, uh, Kalol, do you want to add anything at all to that? No, that's, that, that's what it is, Vikram. It's been in, the asset has been impaired a few years back and it's, it's not operational. And my third question is, uh, regarding the Raghad Palace, Madhya Pradesh. Yes. See, the construction hasn't started yet. As for my information, it's still open for regular uh, tourists. Can you update the status of this, uh, the project as, as, as of now? Yeah, no, uh, Amit, the, the work at site is, is continuing. Uh, and the, in Kalol's chart, you'll see we have a chart on when the hotel will also be ready for operation, which was, which was Kalol, that was on 26, am I correct? I can't recall the, the month. Yeah, no, it was 25, 5, 24, 25. 24, 25. So, um, but work is well underway, uh, uh, I'm at, at site. But is it open for tourists right now or no? It, is it open for? Uh, regular tourists? No, the hotel is, is under construction. <clears throat> okay. And my last question is regarding, uh, the, uh, Kuku Cafe and, uh, the new restaurant, the uh, Sand and uh, restaurant you're coming up. And, uh, this is a big club. Do you think as a uh, management, the management is putting too many uh, fingers in different businesses altogether? Because hotel industry is our main business. Amit, Amit, it is very difficult to yeah. comprehend your question because there's a lot of disturbance in the line. Can I repeat? Yeah, please, please slowly. Actually, and, I, I, and heard, I heard the, uh, Naveen, I, I think I heard the question. I, I know it's it's a lot of disturbance, but I think, so actually, Amit, these businesses are not, um, uh, they're all related to our core business, which is hospitality. 
F&B is a integral part of uh, the hospitality business. Uh, so that's the first thing. And the Bay Club is a it attracts our, our premium guests. Uh, it provides them and their families with exceptional facilities, and it helps us to build uh, and engage with our, our customers, uh, which uh, not only visit the Bay Club, but also stay at our other hotels and pay p- premium prices at, at, at our hotels. So I think it's compl- it's not uh, – a, a separate business uh, at all. And um, uh, the Amadeo, which is uh, going to open uh, middle of next month, is a uh, going to be an exceptional dining uh, uh, venue uh, overlooking uh, the uh, Geo Fountains, uh, an exceptional location. And we have no doubt that it will be very, very successful. So, um it's it's really in keeping with our business is certainly the perspective that we've taken. This isn't a business which is outside of hospitality. And yes, my worry, sorry, uh, my worry is that Tokyo uh, Forever has been there for two years almost, but uh, now there's no uh, talk of expansion of the whole uh, cafe chain. I'm happy to go through the project. Yeah. No, so Amit, I, I'll just uh, tell you what happened with Cuckoo. When we opened Cuckoo, our focus was really on a patisserie concept. Um, that's that's what we thought would work. Um, we realized that that is not what we what it is, and so we've significantly changed uh, Cuckoo's positioning from a uh, patisserie to a casual dining venue. And some of these changes in menu, etc., took place uh, a couple of months ago, and there has been a, a, a significant increase in sale. So um, I still believe in Cuckoo in the long run. Um, I, I believe it will do well, and we're seeing uh, some sites of that uh, immediately. And once uh, it stabilizes, we're, we're clear on, on that this is a workable concept, then, of course, we will we'll look at scaling this concept. So I think I've said this before, and, and that position hasn't, hasn't changed. Um, yes, uh, because the brand uh, Cuckoo has been uh, uh, taken by many other people. Right now, there's the latest uh, bar just opened at uh, uh, Dubai, which is doing very well. And its name is Cuckoo again. I just wanted okay. to inform the company. Actually, uh, Amit, could you just send us details on that? Because I'm not aware of it. And if this brand name is registered, so they nobody else should be using it. So if you could share those details with either Kalol, myself, or, or Naveen, I'd be really grateful. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll do that. Thank Thanks, Amit. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Amit. We have a question from Kirti Jain. Kirti, please go ahead. So a good part of my questions have been covered by previous participants. Uh, my question is to Kalol, sir. Uh, sir, uh, there is an increase in other expense on a QOQ basis. Uh, so what is the reason, sir? Uh, uh, yeah, good afternoon, Kirti. Yeah, the increase is actually uh, increase in variable expenses. It's mainly two factors. One of the most important increases in account of increase in commission to travel agents, which has increased because the business has increased as, as such. So obviously the quantum of uh, commission expense has gone up. And second is uh, repairs and maintenance is also something that was a little subdued during the COVID period. Uh, so that has also gone up, but there are several other heads where it has uh, come down. So this increase is not really one to really worry about. Okay. No, no, sir. Uh, so uh, when we see standalone, uh, the other expenses are flat on a QOQ basis, but when we see console P&L, uh, other expenses are uh, up 50, uh, 50 crores actually. Standalone, are you comparing uh, with last year? No, QOQ, sir, quarter on quarter. Quarter on quarter, yeah. Quarter yeah, on quarter, that is... uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Keithy, I mean, you know, uh, quarter and quarter, actually, if you see, there are some expenses which are not incurred during the peak seasons and they are deferred into the summer seasons, etc. So really speaking, it's all in control. It's nothing really out of uh, out of the line. Sure. Uh, yeah. And Kalol, it was just again, maybe you want we just want to emphasize the point on the increase in flow through. Commission. Yeah. No, and also the the flow through uh, that you mentioned right in part of your opening presentation, uh, you'd covered yes. that. So um, 
which suggests that expenses uh, are, are well under control. Uh, all expenses are well under control. Go. Uh, yeah, sir, just one last question. Sir, yeah. with regard to the underactive discussions pipeline, uh, how close are we for the materialization of this pipeline? Uh, if you can highlight something, that would be great, sir. Great. I think uh, Kalol's presentation has dates on everything. But, um, you know, we you, you would have seen that uh, our, our existing hotel portfolios performed well. I think we're well positioned as far as these hotels go uh, in terms of future performance as well, I hope. Um, I think the, we all recognize that uh, a key area of focus of the company and therefore all of us is on growth. And that's what we're focused on today. Um, and we will, as soon as we have information to share with you on growth, that we're working on this every day. Um, uh, and this is, uh, if there's one thing that gets leadership's attention, it is to drive growth. So I hope all our efforts will have a positive outcome and we'll be able to share something with you uh, in, in time to come. Uh, and hopefully that shouldn't be too long. So um, uh, that's what I'd like to uh, add to that, Kirti. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, no, so what I meant was in the slide 30th, on left-hand side, bottom, you have mentioned that un uh, the underactive discussions, at Oberoi Hotels 3, Trident 7. Uh, my oh, question yeah. was, yeah. Okay. my question was pertaining to that, sir. Yeah. So, so they're all, and and my answer would remain the same. We're pursuing these with uh, great determination, with great energy, and with great passion. Uh, and uh, with all those three things in place, I hope we will be able to share details with you uh, soon. Sure, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Kirti. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Kirti. We have a question from uh, Bharat Seth. Bharat, please go ahead. Hi. Am I audible? Yes, Bharat. Loud and clear. Please go ahead. So, Mr. Averai, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, when we are talking of uh, driving a growth and we are seeing a big opportunity in the luxury segment where we are present, so in what will be the in absence of a new uh, addition of the new hotel, what will drive our growth in short term and medium term? How do we really take this growth strategy going ahead? Bharat, a very, very good and a very fair question that you ask. Um, so there is still, you know, our, if you look at hotel prices in India and we've seen rates go up for us. Um, you know, whether it's Oberoi or Trident. And this is also an industry uh, or hospitality trend in India. Um, but even today, if you compare the quality of hotels that we have today with most parts of the, the world, uh, our hotels are in India are really underpriced. For the quality of hotel and the quality of service you get, um, the, these hotels are very uh, a, a great value. Now, I'll give you uh, some insights, and this is a function of supply and demand. Uh, we have a hotel in Gurgaon, um, and this, uh, the Trident Gurgaon, and that used to do an over over 20,000 average room rate. Um, so really, uh, and this is, you know, the hotel opened, if I remember correctly, in 2006. So these figures that I'm quoting you may be, uh, 2010, 12, I don't remember exactly. Uh, the point I'm making is that there is considerable upside in average room rate, and there is also some upside in, uh, in occupancy as well. So, um, I think in the short to medium term, there's quite a lot of headroom, uh, both at Oberoi and Trident hotels. Yes, sir. And how do we see, because this is la Higher ARR are largely contributed by a foreigner visitors, whereas, I mean, we understand this is still has not really picked up, I mean, pick up the way it should have domestic traveler is. So how, what is your sense on when do we see really foreigners start with uh, visiting more or occupying that can help in improving ARR as well as occupancy level? 
so two things about Bharat. First of all, uh, uh, as Indians, our propensity to spend is actually very high. And we see that if you look at the uh, the presentation that Kalola has, foreign occupancy hasn't. So there are two slides in Kalola's presentation. One shows the uh, occupancies, foreign occupancies, and the other one shows average room rates. So you can see foreign occupancy hasn't come back, but you'll also see that average room rates have grown considerably despite that. Um, so our Indian guests, or we as Indians, are more than happy to pay those rates for a quality experience. That's the first point. The second point is that we certainly expect uh, foreign business to bounce back to or hopefully even surpass COVID levels um, in this coming winter, and that will help uh, our hotels further. So I think both those signs are positive, uh, both for rate and for occupancy. Vikram, if I may add to what you said, uh, Basically, uh, Bharat, if you see the last uh, seven quarters, it was not as if visa requirements, etc., were very, uh, for very, you know, relaxed. So therefore, it was people in different countries uh, really found it difficult. So those are, as those are easing, uh, foreign uh, travels arrivals are also going up. So uh, really, we have a case for optimism here. Okay. And when do we expect a new hotel to be operational? in uh, our uh, for our company we've given a chart bharat on uh, slide number 30 on all the upcoming projects which have already been announced and a list of 11 hotels which are under active discussion which will be announced shortly okay fair and my one more question is about see, normally when we open a new property normally how long it takes to break even or start contributing at uh, EBITDA level? Um, it, it varies from location to location, but I think our industry, generally the, it's between three to five years, depending on the location. Fair. And last question for our CFO. So what, I mean, I've seen that in standalone, our Q4 is always a better than the Q3, whereas in the, if we look at on console, whereas Q4 is a little lower. So what is that? I mean, that seasonality is there in console level. That is really, if you can give some more color to into it. Well, I'll first begin by saying that if you see the composition of the consolidated results, uh, so one large chunk of that is international. Right. And international, the hotels have two kinds of financial reporting. Some hotels are on a financial year basis. Some are on a calendar year basis. So therefore, uh, in the case of some of the hotels which get, gets consolidated on a, on a one line consolidation, there in the last, uh, the results which are incorporated are as of December of the last year. So obviously there's a seasonality effect there, but that really does not uh, change the whole, whole perspective. I think the, the point uh, that is very relevant for us to consider and which we are very actively pursuing is uh, there is a major shift and focus on uh, how to really make our international business extremely profitable. They are great properties and very well appreciated by guests, but uh, they need to perform as good as the Indian hotels, uh, the, the, comp the hotels in India do, uh, which their management is very, very well seized off. And uh, hopefully going forward, uh, we'll have similar kinds of trends, both for standalone and consolidated results. And thank you. I wish you all the best. Sir. Thank, thank you thanks so, much. so much, Bharat. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Bharat. The next question is from Saurabh Patwa. Saurabh, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so just wanted to understand your thoughts on uh, so the kind of hotels which we have on the luxury side. And I think we believe uh, is uh, largely that's why we have a larger proportion of owned and versus managed, lower and lower proportion of management control. Is this uh, I think as a sort of sort of a, uh, a roadblock in uh, increasing the pace of growth, or we uh, essentially we want to remain focused on owned versus uh, not going for a lot, lot of management controls, management. Uh, I, I think for for us, Saurabh, uh, they are we can grow through management contracts, we can grow through hotels, 
where uh, EIH uh, is an owner, um, like many of our, the EIH hotels, or we can grow through partnerships. And uh, growth uh, is very important for us so that we are in locations where our guests travel to, um, and uh, also important to us for the career aspirations of our colleagues, so we can offer them growth as well, and also grow uh, the company uh, um, uh, uh, profitability, both top line and profitability. So uh, uh, we at EIH are we are happy to pursue all those options for, for growth. There's no one single pill. Uh, we, we'd be keen uh, and we're actively pursuing opportunities in all three areas. If I may just add to what Vikram said, I'll give a financial perspective to it, uh, Saurav. I think it, firstly, it's a good question. Uh, I think uh, if you study the company's balance sheet and profit and loss accounts very carefully, including consolidated, you would see that all our subsidiaries and EIH is today a debt-free company and has sufficient amount of cash reserves in hand, right? We have also also listed out the projects which are going to be managed, which are going to be moved, et cetera. So what you will realize if you really do a deep dive is that along with the company being uh, cash surplus, obviously that lends us enough credibility to raise an amount of debt which the company uh, can sustain which really adds up to say that there is quite a bit of uh, funds in hand, which we can easily deploy over the next uh, three to four years. And if you correlate that with the point that uh, the return on capital employed that I've shown to you uh, on a little bit of slide, really speaking, when these hotels that are built, they really provide the return on capital employed. You can see the difference in management fees versus only earning management fees versus the difference in overall earnings if the hotels are owned. So to answer your question in short, I think it has to be a mix and that is what the management is pursuing. It has to be a credible balanced mix and quality is our, our uh, topmost priority. Therefore, uh, really speaking, going into the volume game to get, uh, you know, many, many managed hotels is not really something that we would want to run. Uh, but having said that, we are very, very well positioned to deploy our funds adequately over the next few years and therefore generate uh, very high returns uh, for our shareholders. Yes, I think so my next question was related to link to this, uh, the, the, the response which you already provided and few of the answers which you provided in the past. So uh, the, the way you have highlighted, like normally any new hotel would take, like say like uh, on an industry basis, uh, three to five years. And since uh, the addition of hotels in for us in next two, three years is, uh, would be very minimal. Uh, we would be essentially betting on operating leverage, uh, 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 and that's why the growth in revenue uh, would would be outpaced sharply by the growth in profitability. Is it a fair understanding? Uh, sorry, Vikram, you want to take that, or should I? No, go ahead, Kalol. The I, I I was trying to really understand the, the question, but please go ahead, Kalol. <laughs> So, Saurav, uh, again, if you see, really speaking, the results that you've seen this quarter and for the financial year is just the reverse, right? The growth in uh, profitability is actually higher than the, the rate of growth of revenue. Now, that's possible because of a number of reasons. Um, and like Vikram mentioned earlier on, I think there is still enough and more upside on the on the room uh, rates front, and which there, therefore re- really the flow through to EBITDA in case of room rate growth is much higher. So therefore, we don't see that uh, really as a concern. Uh, but also to say that uh, I think you mentioned that we have limited properties, uh, which we are talking about. Uh, that may not well be the case if you wait for uh, the year to go by. Probably you'll hear uh, more such announcements. Just that we are today in a position uh, where we wouldn't like to really jump the gun. But uh, surely that's not an assumption that one should straight away make. So, so that, that is exactly what I wanted to understand. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Really Th- thanks, Orvin. Thank you, Kalo. Thank you, Zora. We have a question from Yasho Vardhan Agarwal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, Yasho Vardhan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for this opportunity. I have a few questions. 
So first on the industry competitiveness. So, so as we are in the luxury segment, so there are other companies like IHCL and even the Marriott is like very bullish on the Indian market. So, so what is our competitive advantage if we are competing in this industry? Like, how are we competing against them? So, if you can answer that on that, so that would be helpful. Sure, sure, yeah. So, um, uh, oh, Yashavard, I'm sorry, I shouldn't shorten your name. I apologize. Um, uh, I mean, uh, what really uh, our guests tell us, and this isn't uh, our perspective, uh, it's our guest perspective that we provide uh, uh, guest experiences that are the best in the industry. And um, therefore, guests, number one, value that. Uh, they see that as uh, distinguishing us from others, and they're willing to pay a premium for that. And that is reflected in the uh, RGI index that Kalol had shared earlier on. That's uh, slide five. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, it's it's at 127, of which the rate is 120. So um, uh, and this is against just to clarify, this is against in each location we define our competitive set. So these are against hotels that we believe uh, that we directly compete in. With STR, you need a minimum of four hotels. So uh, these are the leading hotels in each of the locations where we operate. And uh, SDR data uh, uh, indicates that we considerably, considerably outperform our competitors in these markets. Uh, so, uh, you know, our guess views on us is what's important. Uh, and we know from data and from what our guests tell us that they uh, appreciate the quality of our hotels. They appreciate the quality of personalized care and attention that our colleagues give to each and every one of our guests. And most importantly, they that creates loyalty and they're willing to pay a premium over our competitors uh, to stay with us. Okay, so that, uh, so, so that would be the only competitive advantage or like is there any other point you would like to add? So I think that's the, the, the key thing if, if I've understood your question correctly, but if I've missed something, please help me. So Yashavardhan, I'll try and just, uh, you know, add up to what Mr. Kumabra said. So the slide five that we've presented is data from 2019 to 2023. And in every single quarter, you would find that our, uh, our average ARR index is higher than 100. Similarly, the RGI index is also higher than 100, which obviously means that the competitive set in which we are operating, we are able to really drive a premium for the quality of services that we provide. So that should be, if that trend is prevalent for four years, then I think that's quite an established trend. But then if there's something you feel, uh, um, I, I really meant that seriously. If you feel we still haven't answered your question, please um, feel free to elaborate further because obviously we would like to answer your questions and we may learn from what, what you ask us or tell us. So please don't hesitate. Yes, sir. Sure. So thank you for that. So, sir, what I'm seeing is that uh, if we we'll, uh, listen to the uh, management commentary of other hotels, yes. so there are many hotels which are in their pipeline and many hotels and rooms are coming into the market. If we say for in the next three to five years. So, so in, so supply, our supply is increasing a lot. And so we are saying that the demand is also increasing. So, so my question is that, uh, I have got that point. The guests will come to us in case so that we are providing them with a good, um, like, uh, services and all. But sir, is there anything uh, else that we could be saying that we are having locations, for example, at very good locality or the very, the hotels that we are having? So the locality in which they are, they are very good and we are providing them with a good service. But is there anything else in which uh, we can say that we are superior to our competitors? So, so on that, uh, I'm looking for more clarity if you could help me in that. Uh, so, yeah, sure. Then we, we, you know, our, I'm not here to comment on our competitors who I, I'm sure do a fine job in the hotels that they operate. Uh, but what I can maybe just add, given what you said, is that we need to be in locations where our guests travel to. And I, I think I made that point earlier on as well. 
and uh, we are entirely focused on meeting or meeting, if not exceeding that objective. So uh, uh, and that comes to down to your point on growth. Uh, absolutely. We need to grow. We need to grow in locations where our guests travel to. And we need to grow uh, with uh, uh, profitable hotels, either for our owners, uh, if it's a management contract, or our partners, if it's a joint venture, or if it's an EIH hotel, um, uh, grow profitably as well. So um, our, our efforts are focused on all three of those. And also I'll add uh, that our balance sheet is very strong. And as I described in one of my previous replies, uh, that leaves us with a potential to really execute projects uh, and profitable projects, uh, and we have access to enough and uh, enough capital for that. Okay, so got it, and thank you for this opportunity and good luck. No, thank, thank you. you so much. Really appreciate your elaboration as well. So thank you. Thank you, Ashwagandha. We have a question from. Uh, Rajiv Bharti. Rajiv, go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Hello, Rajiv. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so on slide 21, uh, you had uh, this direct channel, which is uh, uh, has increased uh, material in terms of contribution. And then you had said that your OTA commission uh, has increased. Uh, so uh, those two comments, are, uh, and can, can you throw some more light on that? Um, the uh, OTA is actually a means to booking, so it's included. It's guests coming directly to us, uh, but using an OTA. So that comes within uh, the direct segment, uh, Rajiv. So, okay. And, and uh, uh, you have specified the five catering business for the quarter. Uh, is, it, is there seasonality in that or? We can, you know, multiply that by four to get, you know, let's say a 524 trajectory. Um, I, I don't want to give uh, forward. Kalol keeps telling me that I, I can't give forward-looking statements, and uh, so I better not. But we, we remain, uh, you know, the, the flight kitchen business went through a very, very difficult period uh, due to COVID. International travel, as you know, stopped. Uh, there were then limited flights. Um, uh, uh, there was uh, domestic airlines that also greatly reduced uh, the number of flights, and that increased over a period of time. Uh, the flight kitchen business uh, for us is our, our largest contributors are uh, international travel. Um, and we've seen um, uh, Kalol has presented a slide uh, on foreign uh, arrivals into India at our hotels. Uh, and I know that people in India are traveling more uh, internationally as well. So I think we're well positioned uh, with all the key drivers for growth uh, increasing, uh, particularly in, and in winter, just to answer your question. Uh, that is greater in winter. There's greater uh, travel to India internationally uh, uh, um, in, in winter, so from October to March. Uh, and that will be reflected in the numbers, no doubt. And, and if you can uh, provide, let's say, what is the ballpark margin at which um, this segment operates at? I mean, I just want to derive, you know, what is the hotel's uh, business margin yeah. because this kind of dilutes that. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Kalol, can, can you... I don't know if you can... <laughs> yeah, so ballpark <laughs> margins are between 20 and 25 percent of it down. For OFS, you were asking, right? For for the flight catering and the airport catering business. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a combined uh, percentage that I mentioned. Uh, however, if you were to do a split between them, that's really going really deep dive, which you always do. I know. Uh, the airport catering business is actually more profitable than the flight catering, but flight catering is also equally profitable. And with the competitive landscape that is opening up in India today in the aviation sector, uh, I think there is a high propensity to uh, for rates to really go up. Hello, would it be fair to also say, and again, I, I don't know if we should be making these statements or not, but I'm not talking about us in particular, but there is a capacity constraint for this segment um, with uh, limited suppliers uh, and demand picking up. So there is a capacity constraint, which should see prices going up 
and with prices going up, margins going up. Would that be a fair comment it's to make? It's absolutely a fair comment, and I'm sure our analyst friends would be able to easily work it out uh, as to how many number of flights are potentially going to get added in the next couple of years, and what is the capacity of, uh, there are only limited set of caterers, what is the total capacity available? If you really uh, correlate the two, you'll see the deficit in capacity uh, that is getting projected. So I think there's nothing wrong in, in saying that. I'm sure uh, Rajiv can find that out. Uh, so on the arbitral awards, uh, so you mentioned that the, the thing is subjudice, but uh, in terms of what so, is the potential risk or in terms of this number ballooning even further, uh, apart from the numbers you already provided for? Well, uh, the management has made a best estimate, and uh, therefore, this is the best estimate of the risk that has already been provided for in the accounts as of date. And, and, and why, why is there a difference between, uh, pardon my uh, understanding on this, uh, and the standalone and the console? So there is a 10 crore on the standalone. Yeah. And, yeah. See, the difference is because uh, the lease rental payment is payable by that company, the subsidiary, which is Mashobra Resort Limited. So obviously that comes in from the consolidated part into uh, the EIH accounts. Whereas EIH's uh, liability is only towards the initial building of the project and all of that. So obviously the liability for EIH to the government is much less as compared to the liability of Mashobra. That's why the standalone figure is lower and the consolidated figure is higher. Yeah, great. And sir, in terms of uh, divestment, is there any any talks of considering Ubera or Mauritius divesting that? Uh, seems they are contributing to losses in the, the contribution to the profit of farm associates. Are you talking of UH flight services or are you talking of Ubera Mauritius? Ubera Mauritius and Mercury car, uh, car rental piece, which is part of the profit of share from associates. Because otherwise, Marrakesh should have contributed to profitability, but no, X of that, the number is a negative number. I'm not sure if Vikram wants to answer that. I can answer that as well. Yeah, no, no, please go ahead, Chloe. These tough questions, you know, these are very <laughs> difficult. So I think you can answer them. No, Rajiv, uh, yeah, Rajiv always asks tough questions. So, uh, so well, uh, I think you'll have to wait a little for the Obra Marrakesh to stabilize because it opened in December 2019 and in March 2020, COVID hit and then the hotel was closed and all of that. So we are the newest entrant in the market there with a beautiful and uh, outstanding product, which is just beginning to really pan out with reviews, etc. So you'll have to wait a little before Marrakesh really comes in. And about Ubera Mauritius, there is no reason at, at the moment to, to really believe uh, that there's a need to really look at it. Of course, there are renovation plans, etc., which are being currently assessed. And uh, as soon as we come up with a plan, I'm sure yeah, that will be available to you. But on divestment in general, if you say, I think uh, in our previous <laughs> analyst calls in previous years, we have always articulated that there is a need which management has felt that we need to really move away from investments which have not yielded, yielded us profits. Two of them we have successfully done in the last one year. One was the EIH printing press and one was the EIH flight services Mauritius which has also been completely, the whole transaction has been completed. So I think as of now, uh, and we already mentioned that, you know, there are other businesses are all uh, really in a state of rebound. So we are in no hurry to really look at any further uh, divestment plans, but if there are any, then we'll be happy to come back. Yeah, and, and the last question is in terms of the, the dividend uh, payout ratio. So you used to have, you know, 50% dividend payout some, some years in the past, and this time around the number is lower. Are, are you are you working towards uh, it's a certain number for the upcoming projects and then the uh, payout ratio would you know, go back to the historical levels? Well, Rajiv, the percentage is actually higher than 50%. I know you're talking about dividend payout. And the reason why we want to, uh, you know, really emphasize, and, and I think Vikram has adequately covered that, is that we want to strike a balance between distributing dividends to our shareholders versus retaining uh, funds for our future growth because we are very aggressively looking at uh, going ahead with projects. So therefore, we need to be careful to maintain that balance and which is why uh, even though we have increased the rate of dividend, um, the rest of the uh, fund is actually available for, for growth, which I'm sure will benefit shareholders 
uh, because in the long term, uh, asset value accretion is probably as important as dividends. Yeah, just one last thing. Uh, on the receiver, there, there was a center of excellence uh, uh, initiative which you guys had. On the receivable number, is there any any more juice left or you're happy with the current uh, number? Well, receivables, I think, has uh, really done phenomenally well. If you see um, what used to be with much lower sets of turnover, if you go back to previous years, the debt used to be uh, well over 200 crores. Now the debt, even with way, way higher turnovers, uh, it's still around those levels. But out of that, about 40 crores is on account of uh, internal debts. So really speaking, debt levels have come down a lot. But yeah, if you say, is there any any more uh, room left for further improvement? There's always room for improvement, of course. So uh, so we continue to, uh, to find out ways and means to improve our excellence. Uh, I think the center of excellence is really done very well for us, especially during the COVID years. And we are definitely looking to, to refine it further along with our colleagues in operations. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank, Thank you, Rajiv. Rajiv. Thanks, Rajiv. Thank you. And the next question is from Tarang Agrawal. Tarang, please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening. Thank you, Shubra. Thank you, Kalul, uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, just steering uh, uh, wheels towards the international business, if you could give us a sense on how the revenue and the profitability for the international business alone uh, panned out for FI23 versus 22. Number two, uh, is there any debt specifically on the international business? And number three, across the seven properties uh, that you have there, I mean, a couple of them in Bali, uh, one in Mauritius and the balance in the other parts of Africa. Uh, if you could just rank, the, rank uh, help me understand uh, you know, which are the stronger properties right now from a, uh, from a PNL perspective and which are, uh, up and coming? Hello, over to you. Two tough <laughs> I thought I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Tarang, yeah, I think. Tarang, I have to, Tarang always asks tough questions. So, uh, thanks, Tarang. <laughs> so, uh, well, you know, Tarang, the reason why we would, uh, so well, in terms of profitability, let me tell you what uh, the businesses have been profitable at EBITDA level, but we've also worked very closely towards looking at whether, uh, you know, uh, because we also want to be a very, very uh, well-governed organization. So there are some losses that have been accumulated into in the current year's uh, uh, consolidated accounts, but that is primarily because of some impairments that we have taken on some of our assets. Uh, some of our assets, for example, the Ubra Bali and the Ubra Mauritius, uh, really need uh, renovation, although they are doing very well. They're achieving good rates uh, as of now. If you see Ubra Bali is doing uh, average room rates of around $300. Vikram, please correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, the Ubra uh, Mauritius is also doing about 625 odd. Uh, Marrakesh is really flying away, so really I don't want to speak about that. That's our newest property. But overall, I think... Over $800. Over $800 per room night. So, uh, yes, they're doing well, but uh, I think the focus of our uh, attention for the last two years was more on India because we were just struggling to come out of COVID. Um, now, having established that and with our colleagues uh, really uh, taking full control of the India operations, it's time for us to also look at what is happening uh, internationally. So therefore, uh, I wouldn't dwell too much on on uh, the pa the past performance, but obviously going forward, I think we will have better news to share in so far as even um, uh, you know path through through to EIH is concerned. But I mean, some sense on uh, uh, the international top line and EBITDA for FI23, because while. Uh, uh, while ARRs uh, sound nice, I'm not too sure how occupancies are panning out there. No, occupancies are also also not bad. Um, so, uh, well, it's uh, the difficulty of you know discussing a figure is because these properties are all in different uh, geographies and in different currencies. So they get translated uh, many many times before they reach the Indian rupee, 
for instance, rupiah going to uh, dollar. So really, there's, uh, it'll be difficult to give a straightforward answer if you want to really analyze. And I'm happy to, you know, take it offline uh, if you wish um, in a separate discussion to explain to you the, the way it is done. But and really, so, it'll be in a, in a conference call like this where we have very limited time left. It'll be difficult to really explain. I understand. Just last, is there any debt on EIH International or any of your EIH International subsidiaries? No, Tarang, there is, uh, I mean, that is the best part of our balance sheet. None of our companies, including the parent company or any of the subsidiaries or associates have any debt on books as on date. No gross debt there, right? No. Okay. Thanks. This is helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, so much. Thanks Tarang. If there's still something unanswered, let me know. We'll pick up a call. Sure. Thank you. We have a question, a few more questions. Jayakant Kasturi. Jayakant, please go ahead. Jayakant, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Some of my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Jayakant. Uh, Nikunj Thakkar. Nikunj? Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. I just uh, just wanted to come back to the question about expansion and maybe ask it uh, ask it a different way. Um, you know, would love to get your thoughts on maybe two factors as relates to your growth strategy. The uh, uh, the first part is just where we are in the industry cycle and whether because of the the rising income levels, for example, within the domestic consumer, that might you know, that might reduce the seasonality or the risk of seasonality from international travelers and how maybe the, you know, this, this industry, this industry cycle might allow you to be more aggressive. That's the first factor. And then the second is, is in terms of wanting to maintain your brand equity. And so this maybe relates more to management contracts, but, you know, I guess the level to which, you know, that, that, that focus on maintaining the, the brand, the brand equity you know, reduces the opportunity set available to you when you think about management contracts that might be up, uh, might be up for bid. Great. Um, so um, I'll try and answer that and Claude, please, please, with anything, please feel free to add or, uh, you know, uh, anything that I need to say or anything that I say. So um, I, I think one of the positive uh, sides of India's increasing affluence is that people are taking short breaks, they're traveling within the country, and they're traveling year-round. Um, so I think that will certainly help, uh, maybe not completely, but to some extent, seasonality. And of course, when it gets very hot in uh, the north, Delhi, et cetera, people will then go up to hill stations. Uh, we have hotels in, in Simla. Uh, so, so I think uh, in time, and we've already seen this trend, uh, Seasonality has uh, been coming down over the, the years, if I were to take the COVID period out of it. Um, in terms of uh, the, the quality of hotels and the, the, our ability to secure management contracts, um, in fact, this is one thing we learned from uh, Mr. Oberoi, Chairman Amaretas, and in those days he was chairman, um, he said, you know, it's when you are partnering with somebody uh, and they are relying on you, you have to be even more careful uh, with uh, giving uh, your your uh, owner a return. And therefore, we get many opportunities. If we do not believe the hotel will be profitable, we do not pursue those opportunities because it's just creating a problem for the future. So we have to believe we have to do our analysis and we have to know with a high level of certainty that we will give a good return to the owner. Um, and we've demonstrated that uh, with uh, our Gurgaon hotels, uh, with Sukhvilas. Uh, we have a fourth hotel with the same owner. Um, and uh, we, we take uh, great um, care in our partnerships or in management contracts to ensure that we only pursue projects where we will, where the owner will be happy with the returns that we can generate. So I don't know if I've answered your question, um, 
Uh, if I were to just maybe say one other thing, we do get opportunities that we do turn down uh, for that very reason. Um, okay, great. That's very helpful. And maybe just to follow up on one of the earlier questions, um, there was a question just about, you know, where the growth might come from the next few years. The um, right, and you mentioned some of the options you're looking at, including management contracts, including some of the uh, the hotels that are still under discussion. Um, the, you know, I, I guess the question is, were you almost implying that we could see growth from some of these hotels that are under discussion, um, you know, in some of the early years, not necessarily the out years? Or is that, you know, is that, you know, is that something you were not implying? Thank you. Um, so if if you uh, if your question is on timing, um, I, I hope we'll have positive news to share with you. We're as eager uh, or we're very eager to share that news with you. And as soon as we're in a position to do that, we will do that. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nipanj. Uh, we have a question from Javir Shekhawat. Javir, please go ahead. Sure. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, good evening, Mr. Obro and Mr. Kundu. Hello. So firstly, Hello. given the TCS imposition, 20 percentage TCS imposition from 1st of July, I mean, how do you think about it in terms of one, your domestic rates and also the impact on your international business? Can you provide your views there? Mm -hmm. You're talking about when you're saying T this is the t uh, the tax that is deducted on foreign uh, travel. The foreign spends, yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure that will help uh, Indian hotels, including us. Um, the extent to which I, I, I'm not sure, but uh, I would say just, you know, if, if you're a traveler uh, or a guest uh, who, who or somebody travels and you, you need to make a choice, uh, between an Indian hotel and, uh, and traveling overseas. Um, I think your, your, uh, take on this will be probably greater than the insight we can offer. Um, our, our perspective is just from, you know, consumers as well of, of hotels. And finally, it's really our customers who make the, the, the decision. But I think more than that, people are, I think the greater, impact comes from a trend we're seeing where people are taking more breaks and shorter breaks. And those are uh, uh, a large proportion of them, I presume, will be in India. Um, I think for the really affluent, uh, uh, this may not have a direct impact, uh, but we have a wide spectrum of guests. And for some, I'm sure it will, for others, it may not. Understood. And uh, I also want to pick your brains on the hotels upcycle. Now, given that most of the hoteliers are posting all-time high profitability and also expanding because of that. So, one, how long do you think this subcycle could last? And secondly, when I look at your ARRs or even that of your competitors, these are probably 30, 35 percentage up versus the pre-COVID levels. So, one, given the FTA recovery, what further room do you think there could be on the ARRs? Yeah, these are my two questions. Uh, so, I think, you know, ARRs really are a function of uh, what the supply is and what demand is. Uh, you know, I used to work at our Bombay hotels, uh, um, years ago. This is in, um, you know, I think it was when India first started to liberalize after the first Gulf War. Uh, and we saw, you know, demand just shoot up. Uh, the hotel was for South Mumbai hotels were full all the time and rates suddenly within a short period of time shot up drastically. Uh, so uh, there's limited supply coming in, um, and supply does take time. So I think there is, uh, uh, in, in certainly in city locations, also uh, the hotels that have been there for some time uh, occupy premium locations that are no longer available. And uh, location uh, for city hotels are very important in a guest choice uh, uh, so I, I think in my view, there's if demand continues to be strong, there's considerable upside in uh, in average room rates. And we are uh, our, our city hotels in India are very underpriced when you look at uh, other other markets around the world. And uh, Mr. Obroy, given that uh, most of the people say that the supply is likely to take another three to four years to come in. 
but uh, aren't you seeing a lot of acquisitions happen, a lot of management contracts because there are a lot of distressed assets available as well. So could supply hit much earlier than what probably the industry is expecting and then hence sort of matching the overall demand growth. Uh, I mean, do you fear that? I, I don't think we, we don't fear it. Um, uh, and maybe we, we should, uh, we don't fear it. Uh, I mean, these, we've looked at in the past a number of hotel assets, um, and not pursued those opportunities because to these as to, to refurbish, redevelop these assets and to make them into hotels, uh, that certainly could be an Oberoi or a Trident, uh, we've, we've at least thought that that would be challenging. Um, now there may be others who can, who can do that. I can't really say, but, um, you know, guests will pay a, a premium for quality hotels and for quality service. Uh, that we are, we're certain on and, and also quality locations, particularly for, for city hotels, for leisure hotels. Um, there's a greater flexibility on, on, on location. Uh, and, um, the, the premium hotels today, uh, in, in a particular city already have those, uh, well covered. Oh, thanks a lot for answering my questions. No, my, my pleasure or our pleasure, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Friends have already taken the liberty of exceeding the time allotted for this call call. So probably we'll just take one last question, which has been posted on the Q&A board. This one is from S. Krishna Kumar, called uh, KK. Can you elaborate the role large shareholders like Reliance and ITC are playing? Has anything changed in their role and involvement? So um, um, as far as Reliance is concerned, uh, we have... Um, uh, two reliance uh, directors on our on our board uh, we have all their support and their trust and we enjoy a uh, a very good relationship with them um, and and they're there they they supported uh, the company during covid with the rights issue if you recall um, uh, so uh, it's it's um, there's really nothing perhaps other than that that I want to add um, uh, we have uh, uh, the full support of uh, uh, the two Reliance directors who are, are very supportive in the advice and guidance they provide us uh, at a board level, and we greatly appreciate that and value that. Uh, I hope that's answered your question, Katie. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vikram and Kalal, for patiently taking all the questions. Uh, hand over the call, uh, the webinar to Vikram for his closing remarks, please. Uh, Naveen, no, uh, first of all, thank, thank you to you. Um, uh, nothing, nothing more to add. I hope this year will be better than last year. Uh, we're going to work very hard to, um, do, uh, uh, drive the, the, the best top line we can, the best bottom line we can. Um, and there's always opportunity to improve, uh, and uh, every rupee counts. Um, and certainly as far as our general managers are concerned, uh, as far as the corporate function heads are concerned, in fact, all our colleagues are concerned, we want to do whatever we can to provide our guests with a great experience. We want to do whatever we can to drive every rupee on, the, on top line and every rupee on bottom line. Every rupee counts. Uh, and we're focused uh, on, on achieving that. So other than that, thank you so much. Really appreciate all the questions. Some of them were very difficult, so please be kinder to us next time. But thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Pachisia, and thank you so much, uh, Naveen. And thanks to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. We are always happy to answer questions, even if it is uh, it couldn't be done uh, within this uh, time slot. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If there are any further unanswered questions, please feel free to send them to me. I've shared my email ID and we'll take it up, take them up with uh, Kalal. Thank you very much, Vikram and Kalal, once again. And uh, I look forward to hosting you again. Thanks thank so much, Naveen. Really appreciate it. Thank you my, so much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank Bye-bye. you and have a lovely evening. Bye-bye. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.